Well, you know, it's very interesting what was announced at this medical meeting around the patient um, that got the bone marrow transplant. But again, you know, I don't believe it's particularly scalable. You think about there are about 950,000 patients who are diagnosed with HIV and about 800,000 patients in the United States are on therapy. I mean, you can't do bone marrow transplants for all of them. Now, as it relates to Gilead, where we're, we remain positive on this company, you know, Gilead is a leader in the space. They currently have about 80% market share in the United States. Um, they also are, you know, innovating so much that, you know, it's almost le casual to take their drugs. Like it's an oral pill once a day mm. with very limited side effects and very good efficacy. So, you know, overall right now they have been able to almost functionally cure and have right. people live almost in a remission for for years. Right. And so you're saying for, for now this doesn't represent, you know, a, a, and I say a threat. I mean, it's, it's fabulous news that, that these could be cured altogether. But obviously Gilead uh, could continue to, to have these treatments on the market. Why is it that bone marrow is so hard and dangerous to do? And, and, and could that be an area of innovation if it does mean cures? Well, I mean, it's done in oncology fairly often with some cancers, but, you know, it's basically taking the, the stem cells out of the body and putting them, back in, putting them back in. So it's a complicated process that, you know, has some level of mortality rate to it. Um, so, you know, it's not like taking a pill or an injection. This is something where it's a procedure and it has real risk related. So this is something that's a little bit different than scaling for that many people that would have HIV. Sure. And so the patients might feel like it's not worth the risk uh, if they can basically, as you say, kind of live while taking this other treatment. Um, backing out from this, we do seem to hear about a lot of treatments these days that are advancing um, cures even in areas uh, from everything ranging from eye problems that lead to serious blindness uh, to some other things like we're talking about today. Is that because there's been so much research and development in these biotech companies during this bull market? Why, why is that and how much longer do you think this could persist? Well, it's why I love my job because this is, uh, I think, very sustainable. We're in an innovation boom in uh, biotech, and it's led by um, small mid-caps as well. There's so many small mid-caps on the scene um, that are doing very interesting things, whether it be cell therapy, gene therapy, RNA interference. Um, you know, also, Gilead has a, they bought a company named Kite. They have a cellular therapy product as well. So it's just that there's a lot more innovation of shifting cure curves um, with novel modalities rather than taking pills and sub-Q. They're able to get at the more genetic causes of these diseases.